Well, welcome to the Dream Labs, Dr. Contrast Live here, uh, part two of uh, the Manicor series. And uh, those of you who joined in yesterday, I really appreciate you all taking the time to kind of be a part of the process and, and your patience uh, watching this thing unfold from uh, just some plain line drawing up to a full tone series of some military value grays that we're showing here today on the screen. So um, really a lot and a lot of um, a conversation there, or a lot of uh, topical work to do as far as illustration goes. I'd like to spend some time here just kind of going through some things. We've added obviously some information to the sketch that we, we wrapped up yesterday. And at the same time, I think um, um, if you notice, went back in and did a lot more detail in terms of getting some highlight back into this thing in the cockpit area. A lot of drawing definition around the canopy for entry egress, some engine systems, and, and really and just taking time to slow down a little bit and really put together a really good process of getting a real good line drawing nailed down prior to going into the final series here. So I'm calling this part two in a sense because I'm reviewing with you uh, some of the status of what we've got going here as far as the ship is concerned and uh, the overall detail, the view, the character, etc. Of the, of the actual machine. And yeah, it is a little bit intimidating from um, um, and a kind of a sinister all military grays and kind of a cold looking machine. But I think once we get into things like uh, adding some some texture and color to it and some background information and some backdrop in the, in the illustration, we're going to kind of strengthen a little bit more, much, uh, a little bit more. I think one of the things that I really just uh, want to spend time today doing with with you as you tune in is to get some feedback from you on uh, as uh, the as it was outlined. For example, the original concept and we started some uh, three, four, three and a half weeks ago was the idea of having it become uh, Banu influenced. And I think the thing that uh, I'm really concerned about, not concerned, but want to be very careful about is not to overcommit too much of the texture change in the actual vehicle itself. And picking the right color is going to be really sensitive. I think if you notice, <clears throat> I don't know if you can see it on the screen or not, but I have added some of the band of influence up on top of the canopy area here by being a little more tile related. Uh, some textural work on top of the piece, and also in the uh, the uh, companion piece with the flight number two, uh, the, the wingman off to the to the upper right there. Uh, I think that's part of the whole process in terms of getting that all squared away. Um, and I think it's it's really kind of it's a very touch and go situation because if you put too much into it, there's a lot of texture going on in the aircraft itself, uh, the actual ship. And I think we go too far with with a lot of uh, texture detail. We kind of destroy a little bit of the intimidation process. But I do want to include some of the language. So if you notice here, we've got some, if you can see it on the screen or not, some very wavy lines and to pick up some of the band influence in this this wing graft here. And back up on top of the canopy, and it's a little bit of tiling work, and we'll repeat the same thing in the other vehicle as we go through the process here. So um, I, I just think it's uh, it's it's really critical to slow it all down here and take advantage of that. And I think the drawing detail, I think, to date is uh, really kind of where I want it to be, and uh, hopefully you feel the same way. But again, hey, Shadow, hey, Doc, in a meeting about watching the glory of the began man. Hey, oh, uh, thanks for joining us here, Shadow. I'm just talking about getting your input on some of the uh, concept here. But if you notice, you can't see it in the drawing itself yet because uh, of the scale here. <clears throat> but I have added some of the Banu influence on the wing graft and the uh, upper canopy area and uh, just, just enough to kind of take it away from being typical. It's a little more organic in some of the shapes here um, and a little more tile pattern up on top of the canopy itself. The same with the wingman here up on top there and over here. So I don't know if you're in a meeting, but I just want to get your input on that. Uh, do you think that's the right approach to take? And the idea, obviously, is to get the right color combination. And once the background is in place, I can see this going to like a warm gold like we're showing here. That might be just enough to warm this thing up a little bit and not get too busy. So let me stop here for a moment and get your input if you're there, Shadow. Anybody? Any, any thoughts at all? <clears throat> Pardon me. <clears throat> Well, I stated before, too, I think a lot of it has to do with the idea of getting a really good overall composition. Of, we worked very hard to get to this stage of what I think is a very interesting looking form. And then from that point of reference, uh, getting it back into some, some substantial uh, color series and studies and so forth were very interesting. Chip, hey, Chip, how are you? Good to have you on board, Doctor. Thanks very much. And again, and, hey, Pixel, thank you. Uh, how are you doing, Pixel? Thanks very much for joining in here. And the question for all of you, I'll just slow it down. This is going to be kind of like a, 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 do it, uh, like a committee day here, just in conversation. I think the line drawing, I've gone as far as getting the detail with some of the line work. And obviously, when I started, a lot more highlight and definition in the canopy to get that bubble form to read. A little more detail on some of the wing structure and some of the overall effect of the aircraft. Getting highlighted in this, the secondary auxiliary engine system. And same up on top and just taking it all slowly here 
but adding a lot of this character to the band of the, the band of influence to me it should be real subtle and i think it should be just again it just because of the shapes because of the way the character is formed is, is unfolding i think the more we keep it very simple but yet at the same time have a little bit of influence in it the band of influence the stronger it will be so um, i chose for example kind of tiling the upper uh, and then I'm putting a bit of a, a, like a very organic pattern on the wing cap here. Same with this, with, with this wingman, the same on the upper here. Just keeping it that simple. Now the question is, what do we do as far as color and texture goes? We know this is a very organic, this is very tile related, organic, very tile related. Um, and, and I think, what, 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 what's your uh, pixel shadow and uh, chip? What, what do you think? Um, should it be more or less? Um, I'll just hold back here, hopefully get some response. Be interested to see what you guys think. Again, this is Judgment Day as far as Phase 2 is concerned before we go into some really color stuff to wrap it up, hopefully tomorrow's stream. <clears throat> Anybody, any thoughts at all? Feel free. I mean, it's an open season here, guys. If you like what you see, great. If you don't, let me know, and we'll kind of hopefully adjust. <clears throat> okay, the question, Chip, is this. <clears throat> Excuse me, the question is, how much influence should we put in this thing? I notice I've, I've, I've taken two areas with this binary color influence, this texture change for the given the skin system, into, for example, um, I, I really isolated into the wing, winglet area and the upper canopy. This is more of an organic kind of a wave pattern, a la Banu language, and this is more of a tile pattern up on top. And uh, keeping the rest of it pretty simple and uh, pretty straightforward because there's so many complicated shapes and forms and too much texture might take away from the fact that it's got a wicked overall halo to it. And again, the same pattern here will be echoed in the, in the wingman portion here. So that's the question. Um, is that the right place to place it? Uh, what kind of color should we use? Uh, I like to mix as well. Um, that's good, Chip. And, um, um, I, I think the idea of, of coming in with a very organic pattern here, for example, very fluid and very organic in here, and then being very, very tile-like up on top. Just enough of a disguise, or very, and then get a little bit of the winglet edge too, and the wing edge with just a little bit more color and the texture to it. Uh, um, but I think we'll do the job. Anything else, for example, as we said, I'm going to be redundant here, but any more we add to that is because the surfaces are so complex, I want to keep it all nice and simple here. Let's see, Chip, especially, everything is very mechanical. Having a bit of organic shape, but yeah, I agree, Chip, I think that's going to do it. So I think that's an interesting res resolve there. And again, this is much more of a towel. If I were to isolate that pattern up on top, let me just show you what we've got here. Um, just for a sheet of paper here. If I were to isolate that, that pattern up on top, let me move the sketch for a moment. What I've got in the winglet end is this. It comes out, comes up here comes over that wing break and does the following, and then it kind of falls in place, and there's a bit of a dividing line. So I brought that shape through here, and I brought the shape off the corner here by doing the following. And then here, look, with that, with that, with that, and with that, and I'm just opposed it by doing that. That's the organic pattern, so to speak. Oops, pardon me here. That's the organic pattern on this portion of the wing. Let's do this, let's we can get them together. That's the organic pattern right there that's happening up on the wing piece itself. So that's number one. Hey, how you doing, Nemo? Good to have you on board here. We're just going through some of the questions, almost like a Q&A day, about uh, getting some conversation on how to finish this thing up and adding a little bit of the Banu influence. I was just going through the description. There's the actual piece. Add a lot more highlight, a lot more drawing um, conversation, a lot more uh, specific detail in some of the line work and so forth. That, that this thing really kind of come to life. Add a lot of highlight in the canopy area, engine systems, and a lot more drawing back in the forms itself. What do you think, Nemo? You approve of this? So far, so good. <clears throat> uh, that's good news. Thank you. Uh, and Nemo and yours and chips and pixels input is terrific. But let me go back and show you again. That area <clears throat> in the wing area is this. It's a lot more organic. Can we just pick up a little bit of, let's do this. It has this. Then it has a little bit more of this, this very, very, very fluid looking pattern that does the following. Then, on, then it opposes it on this side. So that's that portion there is what's taking place in these winglet areas here. So that shape is happening up in here. here. Now the real issue is color. Um, and I, I'll, I'll explain in a moment what I think in terms of that. She is definitely, our, yeah, that's cool, very cool. Thank you very much, Gad, and much more tea. Yeah, it does. It, it, it's getting, yesterday was a bit of an intimidation in terms of just getting the things stained in. So I really appreciate your patience staying with me throughout the course of the day there, guys. So that's that's the wing area. Now the upper canopy is doing this. Let me just kind of illustrate here for a second. Now the upper canopy above the aircraft itself, it's actually, I'll, I magnify it just a bit. That pattern's doing more of this. It's more of a tile pattern where it comes out and breaks. 
and it breaks. And it breaks. And there's a little split line in it that does not follow, just little arrowheads. And it just kind of goes across the entire piece. You won't see much of it, but just enough to kind of break it into some sectional changes here. So if I can just kind of block this in, just a certain series of tiles that go across here. That's what's happening. <coughs> Pardon me here. <coughs> That shape, or those shapes, are what is happening up on top of the canopy itself. So it's very subtle, but I think it's definitely going to make a big difference in terms of putting together the, the actual the contour of the textures. Let me kind of ink that in, but so you see a little more. It's more of a, if I were to isolate that shape, it's more of this. And there's a little break on the end here. There's just a little bit of line work to it, and the other one kind of marries in and does the same thing. Just repeats itself right through. So that that's kind of the overall pattern on top of that as it goes across the, the uh, top of the canopy area up and through here. So um, like those tiles. Yeah, I think that's kind of neat, just to keeping it nice and geometric. As I said, it's a bit tough because you won't see much of it up there, but enough to get an indication about where we are uh, in terms of uh, the overall content of the machine itself or the piece. So the next, next thing I did was this. I just want to, again, as I stated, this is going to be judgment day in terms of having you all <clears throat> begin to look at this uh, process, begin to help me refine some things here. Now, what's missing are two other things here. Um, another one we're looking at here is this whole idea of getting the backdrop in. So what I did, put a couple of color palettes together. I just want to get your input on what This was one set where I came back in with a series of blues, for example, a very cloudy um, overall atmosphere. Um, in the magentas, a little bit of gray, some purples, and some, uh, some really deep, uh, like a uh, royal blue. So that's one mix I put together in terms of maybe uh, a content. So when I, that won't transfer there. So what I thought I'd uh, look at was that's a that's a palette mix. I just wanted to look like a, a, a bellum and begin to look. I don't know if you can see that or not, but let's look at this. Can you see through that all right? That's what that might look like in terms of backdrop. I'm not quite sure where the position is going to be, but that kind of atmosphere, not the pattern overall, but just a nice blocking behind that. Um, that's one approach to the actual, this is a bit cool on cool, I'm not sure if that's the way I want to go yet. Um, yeah, you know what, that, you, you, you hit it right, right on the head here. This was a cool series, then I went back and said, you know, it needs something a little bit stronger. I went back in here and just said, okay, what about that mix right there? We get much more of a cloudy, kind of an angry looking sky, where it's more magentas, <clears throat> oranges, a little bit of charcoal, and some, um, and some deep reds. So you got it right there, <laughs> Channel. Yes. <laughs> but what happened is this. No, I took that same palette and went like that with that. Now look at that. That starts to really make that screams. Stuff on fire. There you go. That's the thing I want to look. That's. Now I'm not. I'm not predicting, for example, that this will be the final composition. There'll be a lot more pattern related. But we might look at it from an upside down point of view. But I think going back in here and doing this, turning it upside down. It just has a lot more volume to it. This looks really angry, and I think that's the thing I'm going to look at here. Uh, yeah, thanks, Shadow. I do too. I think the reason I did this was to go back. The initial concept was to go back and look at something that was more on the on the cool range, for example, like this. <clears throat> you know, it, it, if, if this were not so intimidating, that's not a bad harmony. But I think when you soften it off, and here's the thing I want to be careful of. When you soften it off, it just it just it was just too cool on cool, and um, kind of a violation of the ethics here. Uh, the day uh, of a hero is over when the sky on the horizon turns. <laughs> well, that's well said. Well, thank you. So, do you like the red, um, the red, orange, and magenta uh, uh, palette, uh, Nemo, as well? Because it, it takes it away from this. For example, this is all cool on cool, whereas this guy really starts to kind of, I think, sing in, in a sense. Because all of a sudden, it goes from the opposite, you know, from cool to warm. Really, really opens things up. And, and we reverse that just a bit. That's how it was initially done. Just as, a, just as a wash. Look what begins to happen there. We can kind of drop it out so we can see what's going on there. Uh, so let me stop for a moment and get your uh, yays and nays. I think shadows in with the with the reds um, and the orange and the magentas, and so am I. Uh, let's see. I'll wait for your comment here. I'll hold on just for a second. <clears throat> yep, okay, Chip, looking good. Thank you. And again, I want to be very careful here to not uh, mislead anybody. It's it's the idea of of this this shape won't be a part of it. It'll be part of this is a combination of mixture. Then it'll come back in and begin to. Uh, I'm going to walk it right through the background of the machine and just going to let it fade as it goes. For this reason, what's missing again? I'm going to finish this conversation. I will add another element as we go here. So I think it's pretty obvious that the cool on cool does not do the job. It's uh, it's an interesting palette, but not there. And I think this is what we're going to go with. 
and the reds and the oranges. And the one thing I want to really point out here before we go into any commitment here is this, uh, for the final piece, which I'm going to start undertaking tomorrow, I just want to get your feedback today. This is really helpful. What, what begins to happen, notice when you go to the color system here, look at the difference in the, in the rag of the paper, for example. The rag meaning, if I could sh magnify this, there's a lot more modeling inside the form itself of the paper because this is, this is a cold press process, which means you get to see a lot of fiber in the paper. Um, the surface I'm working on is called Navigator, and it's a great paper, but it also has a little bit of a weave to it. So I'm going to be very careful to not mix too much to pick up some of that weave pattern in there so it doesn't look like spotty or dotted. So uh, what I'm going to do is make sure that we get that nice soft, maybe a nice soft palette in there, starting in the upper corner, for example, and just let it drift right on through the composition into the corner and let it fade. So that's, that's, that's really helpful, gang. Thank you very much. So that's the winner. We'll put the rest of those guys away and call it a day. That's really cool. So all that to say that once we're going here, <clears throat> once we have the color background all squared away, um, the last element is going to be this. Uh, I think getting some of the cannon fire, for example, coming out of this thing. I thought about, since this is a color palette we're going to work with, this one right here, if we put that back in place, coming out of the cannon systems themselves will be like through here. Let me get this out of the way. The firing line will be this, coming off of this, coming off of this, this, and that, and then just getting some real, real interesting streamers coming off of that thing. But I think it would really be great with that color combination would be the following. Coming out of the, the fire itself would be, or the cannon fire itself, would be almost like a, a bright, bright white into a pinkish red um, a, a flare series of maybe one or two or three or four, kind of, just to warm it up a little bit more and give it a little more action. I think that could really be very, very helpful. What do you think about that? Instead of going to just a white line, for example, on top of the background, putting a more color into it, a little bit of a watercolor mix. That could be kind of a neat deal. So what I'm looking at here, folks, and I really want to say this with a lot of sincerity, you all who've been watching this for the last week and a half, or three weeks rather, with Shadow and I putting this whole piece together, have spent a lot of time <clears throat> helping us put together the final process. This is your piece. Um, more, more your expression, more than it is mine. Uh, I'm just a facilitator, but you helped, actually helped us design this thing from, from day one. And the reason I'm going very slow motion here today is to make sure that we get your input and you've seen the progress and, and from, the, from the start to the finish. Now we've got a pretty good line drawing set or an illustration to begin, but the final pieces are going to make it all come together. And that's why I'm slowing it down a little bit. You become part of the process because I respect the input and uh, I'm not going to derail it. And, and uh, I'm going to highly regard it because it makes a big difference. You've already said the background's going to be warm reds and oranges and magentas. That's great. Um, <clears throat> so what do you think about the firing line systems? Uh, instead of going just pure white or blue or so you're getting that kind of a reddish hot pink or hot red as it comes out of the thing to kind of match the background. That sound good? Starship Captain Nemo, I have a question exactly about muzzle flashes and I'm hoping to see how you tackle it. I'm anxious about how I should do my red, orange, yellow bar lighting in the background of my picture. You know, yeah, I do know it. I think that'll be kind of cool. Uh, um, Nemo, and uh, by all means, I'd be more than happy to consult with you or help you go through that process. Now, that muzzle flash is going to be interesting. Well, I'm going to start with a, oh, it's like a, like a tracer line and open it up into a series of flares. Uh, not very large, but just enough of a burst to kind of put a little more pinkish red into it so it has a little bit of a heat to it. So that's what I'm looking at as far as uh, executing those uh, firing lines when they're put in place. And you'll see all that come together tomorrow when we start to put the final pieces together. So does that help to answer your question, uh, Nemo? Hopefully. <clears throat> Firing line would depend on its lasers. Or, yeah. Yeah. It's probably going to be more laser type, I think, uh, Chip, unless you guys see it differently. Yeah, I'm very looking forward. Uh, what do you think? Um, I think the firing line, to me, will be much more of a laser um, as opposed to a ballistic. Um, I think a little hotter, a little more focused, a little more streamlined in terms of getting a target set. What do you think, guys? Are there guns on the end of the wings, or are they pointing? No, they're, they're both eye pokers and guns. Yeah, th those are actual, those are actual munition systems. These are munition systems, munition systems underneath, up on top. That's munition. So there's a lot of character in terms of. And then hidden guns, for example, can kind of come out of the slide doors. These can be converted into munitions as well. So there's a lot of firepower in this machine, Chip. Hope that answers your question. Does that make sense? Good, good, good. <clears throat> Wing guns look more like pulse laser, and then those looks more like a gun. Yeah, that's that's true. That's a good point, uh, Nimbo. You've got that down to a science. Excellent. Fire everything. <laughs> yeah, that might come down to that too. Well, as long as I'm not fired, that'll be good. 
Uh, if you guys don't fire me, I'm, I'm going to be happy. So I think uh, overall, you guys, uh, just a quick consensus with wherever you are. You're happy with the, the overall state of the machine, you know, the, the, you know, the angle of attack, the character, the sketch, the actual the actual bird itself. I mean, does it really have some evil look to it? And once we add some bandu language to it, I think getting up um, um, and the background in the, and the, the firing lines in place, I think we've got a really great uh, platform for a really interesting uh, uh, execution as far as the final poster. This is going into print form too. The hook's going to go up for sale, so I'm going to make sure that we get the right content here from your input. They're looking good. All right, Chip, I'd really appreciate that. Very, very excellent. Um, one thing again, let's go back just to get, I don't know if you had a chance to, for Nemo, um, uh, Pixel, everybody who's listening, uh, Shadow, that if, we, if we go with this warm red-orange combination, let's put that back in place here. If we go back into that system right there, um, I, I'm, I'm more inclined to think of getting into, for example, let's do this. Let's get rid of that for a second. Uh, let's go back. That Bandu language tile pattern, I've got three choices here, guys. Let's see what you think. Should that, if we, should we go with, with a yellow, like a desert sand, which is that color? I'm going to come up in a moment here. Or a pale, this is called um, like a salmon or a light orange. You've got that. Or we have a definite crisp orange, which is that. Now those three pieces, let's let's isolate them here. You have you have this one, and you have a little softer, and again, more of a sand color. All three are warm in a sense, but that's what we'll look at just for what it's worth. Those three color pairs will go inside these little Banu language pieces. Anybody, any input there about which one you prefer? Knowing we're going to have this very warm palette underneath it all. What do you think, guys? Again, just looking for your your timely input because it makes a lot of sense to have it all begin to come together from your. I'd go medium light orange. Okay, so that's Chip's vote. So there's one for medium light orange. So there's one. Anybody else? I'd go medium light orange. Very good for Chip. Thanks, Chip. That's uh, that's a good call. I think again that, that you'll see that through. The, uh, some of the background, and by the way, too, the background wash will not interfere with the aircraft itself, with the ship. So we'll be able to see those colors come through very nicely. Anybody else? What do you think, Nemo? You've got a darker orange, deep orange. You've got a light pale orange, and you've got a, a, like a desert sand. Anybody? Oh, difficult. I cannot see it yet. I would stand out in front of it. Back. But yeah, I think that um, what's going to be interesting there, Nemo, let me clarify that um, in the middle as well. Um, <clears throat> These accents will not be interfered with the background. That background is going to go in be, is snake in between the, the actual ships themselves. That background is just there for color content. We're not going to cover up the machines at all. So we'll see these colors in the wing systems themselves. So what do you think? <clears throat> you, know, you will see one or the other, dark, medium, and then the light sand. Rich yellow, okay, that's not bad either. So you, you, there's a rich yellow, so we've got one on one. Anybody else? Pixel, are you still there? What do you think? Choosing color palettes is always so difficult. <laughs> and me too. That's why I'm asking the question. I know which way I'd go, but I think I'm, I'm really more concerned about what, what you guys think in terms of what the right combination should be. Man, better contrast with the yellow. Yeah, that's not bad because there's a little bit of it in here. There's a little bit of yellow, the little same, that uh, yellow, that, that that sand color is in the actual port itself on the aircraft. So that, that, that shows up pretty nicely. Not bad at all. The pixel color left. <laughs> Let's go that route with the pixel color. That sounds good. Let me get this out of the way here. Let's just put this off to one side. Yeah, I, I think there's a lot of, there's a lot of real careful consideration about what that's going to look like here. And uh, once we get a good consensus, we've got one for the orange and one for the other. It's chip seven. It's like deciding what to eat at the restaurant. You can't decide. Bring everything out. Yeah, there you go. I'm in the same boat, uh, Chip. That feels like the same thing I go through all the time. Everything looks good. Well, I think it might do this, guys. What we want to go through is this. Once we get to tomorrow, once we get that background wash in there, once again, it will not cover the aircraft or the ships. It will sneak in between and behind and kind of open up into this area here, create the environment. So once that's in place, then we can kind of come back and ask some questions about how do we put this Bannu language into place so it makes sense. And then with the laser, the, the laser and the uh, the firing, the uh, fire lines all squared away, kind of put the whole piece together. Um, does that sound like a fair a fair process, gentlemen? Sounds to me like you've got a pretty good run at it here. There's a lot of things to consider. Um, yeah, that sounds good, guys. Yeah, I think that'd be the right way to do it here. Instead of trying to push it now, 
Um, let's get that background. Let's just do this up to one side. We're going to see more of that. Uh, you'll see that the actual, again, you'll see the actual ship clearly, but the background will sneak in between and around it. And then once we get all the fire line placed in and all the elements put together, then we can go back and decide on whether we're going to go orange, light, or yellow. That'll kind of help us make that decision. Now that's good call, guys. So that's helpful, really helpful. Let me put this aside here for a second, get rid of some of my stuff. All right, so. <clears throat> Last but not least, I think uh, we're going to wrap it up here today by doing the following. I think this is going to be really timely. Uh, we've got that guy pretty well set. Let's move that out of the way for a moment. I'm going to bring this one back in. And this has been really an interesting, not a, not a conflict, but a good conversation piece. As you remember yesterday, we started the, the program with the, that's the, this one represents the in-flight attack mode of the aircraft of the, of the ship itself. Uh, Pixelate, hey, the way Dr. Kaz I broke up this shape so well in gray, gray scale is amazing. I would have just had like three swatches of gray and called it done. <laughs> no problem at all, Pixel, thank you. I think that it just merited that. It just seemed like um, going through the process yesterday of getting a lot of variation in grays and kind of muting things in made a really tremendous difference in terms of putting together a real formidable looking evil ship. Uh, light, medium, and a dark. What more do you need? Yeah, that's it. You got it. Three, three separations right there. So that kind of sets the tone for that guy. We'll get the background in, get the firing line in, and put the banner language in place and call it a day, guys. We're gonna. I'm, gonna, I'm taking my time again. Not to be. Uh, I don't want to delay things here, but I'm taking my time to do this right because I really feel an obligation to let you all know that you're a part of the design process um, and then this is your ship and I want to make sure we communicate that back and forth about how you feel about it, what you think in terms of rights, goods and bads, uh, we have the right stance, color, etc, background tones, uh, warming it up and uh, getting a lot more intimidation in the form thus far. We've taken it this far and I want to make sure we complete the thing with a real real zing to it. So when, it, when it's all said and done it goes to print form. It's a real winner. So thanks very much, gang. Let's do, that's where we are with that one. Let's put that aside for a moment. Let's back to now in the landing version, which is what I'm going to start next week, for example. I'm going to spend tomorrow's stream finishing up the attack version. Then I'm going to come back in next Tuesday and begin to really kind of nail down what I refer to as the, as the uh, at rest or the landing pattern. This is a sketch that motivated it all. Um, and unless you see something different, in it, I still think that became the footprint for what it's all said and done. Now, the question I'm bringing up here in, in conversation now is we have that piece and I just roughed in putting a very simple little hanger background in this thing and a little bit of a toner atmosphere to it and I come back and made that same red sky or red orange combination behind it all to get the form to work but my question about this one is before we start going into work on it uh, for example when I finish up the line drawing on this thing is that the right expression should we keep it very um, uh, hanger related uh, should we keep it all just atmosphere um, again uh, it, it's such an imposing view, and then add, obviously adding a lot of human scale, I'll get more, I'll get more detail with some of the individuals out in front of the machine. Again, this is going to reflect a 20 to 40 meter uh, uh, attack or attack vehicle. Uh, I think the hangar, I think the hangar will work. I think, uh, thanks, Chip. I think the hangar system is a whole lot more um, uh, acceptable in a case like this because I hate to put it out there in a barren desert, so to speak. You don't get a sense of scale, or it just kind of gives you the sense of scale. Yep. But do you, do you like Chip? Do you like the forms that are back there, or is it too too flamboyant? Should we simplify that, or, or even more um, more flamboyant? Um, your, your call, guys. What do you think? Pretty interesting. Chip with some piles of missiles and something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we could put a whole big cart. You know, it's an interesting thing you brought up there, Chip. I thought about doing like a little service vehicle down here as well, but I don't know if I want to really get a lot of stuff to take away from the drama of this ship at rest. Um, I just think it's um, the shape of the hangar is great. I think that, that, that whole, uh, once I tighten that down and get a little bit more atmosphere in this thing and then take the same, keeping this very much in key, then again, outside of that, this whole area behind it here will have that same kind of, let's do this. It'll have that same kind of sky tone behind it, which is really kind of cool uh, to bring it all into play with the same very military looking machine here, same Banu language in place, and then the, the, the sky will be very cool or very, very, very line related here. So there's the actual thumbnail study that started it about three weeks ago. Here's a finished line drawing. Notice how much, uh, much we refined the shape itself. Let me bring this a little bit back in. How much we refined the shape. So I've dropped it down just a little bit, and here's its companion piece. Let's do this, that to that. 
that's going to look like that's what this piece will have that kind of similarity to it. Then we'll add in, for example, human scale. I'm going to get that in position probably right in through here to get some human scale in this guy. Then come back behind it. Let's get this out of the way just for a second. Then come behind this guy and begin to put a real nice composition together, a, a very dramatic looking hanger scene. But again, notice how we've kind of cleaned up the wing surface. In this one, we'll see a little bit more of the of the actual language, of the Banu language we're going to use, and also in the wing end here. This is where that this is the same area where that, that very organic looking form will look like when we put that together in the wing system. Engine nacelles will be very, very much the same. Um, even thought about maybe adding a little bit of texture back and through here. I'm not sure. We'll see how that happens. You can't see it very well in this view here, obviously, because it's pretty slim. But I think in this view, there's a lot of merit at rest because this thing kind of flares up a little bit. You see it, and it rotates just a bit. So you see much more of that shape itself. So we might want to put a little bit of texture on that one. We'll see how it goes. Um, so that's that's the consensus here, guys. As I said, today is more of a check and balance day, not so much illustration day. I just want to be sure that we did the right thing in terms of get the composition down. Let's bring this guy back. Yeah, let me. Uh, quick question: Do you like this 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 setup here, guys? With the, with the wing system being dropped, the, the cannon system, very big cantilever, that dragonfly tail on this thing. What do you think? Are we ready to fly on this one? Come next Tuesday. I'll just hold it on here, just get some feedback. All right, Chip, looking good. So you're in. Once we get that, and again, you like that that hanger system, I'll do the same thing, repeat myself. But, yep, okay, very good. What I missed? Not much. You just I just reviewed the uh, the, 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 uh, the resting, the uh, landing uh, situation there. Put seal of approval on the screen. There you go. <laughs> yeah, done. Um, chip 7 approved. Very good. So, yeah, we just talked about this view of uh, Shadow. Going back in and literally coming back with this kind of an atmosphere in the background, a little bit of hangar graphics. So just gonna give it a bit of a, an atmosphere. And then giving that same that same sky tones that comes out of it with that same kind of wash behind it could be really interesting. And the reason again, um, sorry for being such a um, so, so, so methodical here. Uh, to me, it's really important for everybody to know that this this whole process has been again your design. Your input has been absolutely instrumental in putting this whole process together. And I'm not going to ignore what you think in terms of what should be done, uh, how to add certain things to make it a little more glorious. And uh, again, those two compatibilities, when, when it's put together, it's really going to scream, I think. So let's go back to this, guys. And we'll wrap it up by adding the, the backdrop, getting that all set up, and then doing a really nice job of adding, again, what's missing, human scale. And we'll get a little more of that same character of the hanger in the background, and we put a lot more atmosphere behind it. And then maybe reflect it down the ground plane. Get a more a little more texture in the ground paint itself. So, um, in, in closing here, what do you think? And are you happy overall with uh, phase one and phase two with the attack of angle illustration, which we'll wrap up tomorrow? Uh, I just want to get some a good feedback today in terms of what the next steps are going to be for this guy. And we've already determined, for example, that we're going to go with, which I think is going to be really exciting to see unfold here, is this, where you get that real warm sky tone behind that beauty. That's going to really scream like gangbusters. That's going to be fun. Um, how many scale would be easy? Yeah, and we're going to put the human scale in there. And this little rack for scale, yeah, that's going to be, that could be cool too. Yeah, that's neat. Um, those are the things we'll kind of consider. And I'm going to do the line drawing first in pencil of the, of the landing piece at rest before we go into illustration. So we'll start that process next Tuesday for sure. Or missile racks, maybe, or maybe hidden rack opening up. Yeah, opening up. That's kind of cool too. A lot of options there, folks. But I think uh, this has been a real good format today to get the attack version put together. I'm going to work on tomorrow. Uh, trolleys. <laughs> trolleys. <laughs> so um, I'll get this all wrapped up. Tomorrow's stream at 2.30. I'm going to definitely put the background in, get the fire line placed, and then begin to add the Banu language, which we're going to add last, whether it's going to be orange, pale orange, or that bright yellow sand. So that's going to be really cool, gang. So no, I, we have enough of those. <laughs> Alrighty, so not bad, gang. Looking pretty good. So thanks so much for your time here today. And again, as I said, this has been kind of a check and balance day where we look at the inventory. I think the line drawing is set. I'm really happy with it. Let me rephrase that. I'm really pleased that your input has helped me put this thing together in terms of being um, compatible with what you saw in terms of this attack vehicle and this whole. But remember, we began with the organic process of looking as a, as a dragonfly, as a mimic form. I think we've done some pretty neat stuff here to get that put together. So, uh, and again, I can't thank you enough for the time and effort put together to help us through the process. You've been terrific to work with. It's been absolutely exciting. So I think it's great. Um, anybody in closing comment here at all? 
thumbs up all the way through, gang? And again, if so, uh, it's your show, and I really appreciate the fact that you had some great input here. Background color, the system of thinking, uh, not a problem, gang. Pretty good. Moar missiles. <laughs> so, well, again, uh, hopefully tune in tomorrow at uh, 2.30, and we'll start putting this whole piece together as far as background, firing lines, and some bando language, and we'll call that a day. And then we'll start looking at the uh, the rested, uh, of the landed platform of the hangar next Tuesday uh, in my uh, first stream. We'll just uh, put some sketches together and look at what might be the right thing to do. Um, plug. Very cool. Um, hey, looking good, gang. Thanks so much for your time. And again, if you have any questions about or things you want me to work on future reference, I'll be, I'll be probably uh, really focused in on this guy um, for the next couple of uh, sessions, at least next week for sure, to get the second one done. Uh, oh, by the way, too, I want to make the announcement, too, for everybody out there. I am putting together an assembly in the shadow for your benefit, obviously, and for everybody else, uh, the winner. I am assembling the portfolio of sketches from start to finish, and then these will be added to it once we get them finished. So I have not been uh, negligent in getting that all put together. That's being worked on as well. So, again, thanks so much, gang. And I really want to stress this, too. Please, I really look forward to hearing from you guys. So uh, please drop me a note at my website, at, uh, or my, my email address, at jim and drcontrast.com, and just give me some ideas of what you'd like to see me do for future reference. Yeah, I can go through a whole bunch of things and, and uh, change uh, variations from uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, or Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, but if you have some things you want to see done, or even if it's a lesson plan of some sort, let me know, and uh, I'd be more than happy to respond in, 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 in time when it's uh, amenable to get it done. And uh, again, obviously, to uh, please visit my website at drcontrast.com. If you know anybody interested in drawing systems, there's a great plan there of nine lessons, very affordable. Please take a look at that at drcontrast.com. And last but not least, I always end this up because it's such a critical thing to state. There's no, no denying, folks, that I'm so grateful for the fact that you all have taken the time to listen to this old guy crank at it here. It's been a real joy. Interesting feedback from all of you. But I think the most important message of all for me is the fact that uh, I've never forgotten this over the years, and I think it's really important to keep calling out and, and stressing that never forget to remember to dare to be great because you are. Um, that's a lot. That's a lot of a comment that to, the big comment they make, but it's an absolute fact. Just dare to be great. Uh, no one else is going to do it for you. I mean, uh, just be yourself. No one else can take your place. And I think that's the most important part of it, being creative in the, in the process. So, again, thank you for your time, gang. Really helpful to get them some final pieces put together. Number one, you've helped me with the, with the Banu language, how that's going to be done. And how we're going to insert that in this final sketch. Also, the background color, uh, being much warmer, a lot angrier skies were very, very helpful. And then last but not least, uh, the idea of getting the fire lines down and just putting a lot more detail into this thing and having a real, a real significant piece of extremely, um, I think, what I think is going to be, in the end, um, when it's all said and done, a really powerful piece of graphics. And again, also uh, working with me on the on the landed on the, the landed version where it's at rest in the hangar and so forth. A really helpful piece, uh, gang. So thanks so much for your time. I wish you all the very best. Hope you have a great day. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow at uh, two thirty. And once again, always, 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 never forget to remember to dare to be great because you are. Thanks for the time, gangs. Have a great one and all the best. Thank you.